of string theory. The philosophy of string theory came about in the later part of the 20th century as an attempt to define and quantize gravitational forces at the subatomic level. Gravity on the macroscopic level had been discovered by Sir Isaac Newton in the 17th century, explained by Newton's development of calculus and tweaked in the most profound way by Albert Einstein in the early part of the 20th century. Sir Isaac Newton had many achievements throughout his life. In the 1600s, he not only discovered gravity and invented calculus, he began to develop theories on the effects of gravity. One such theory was that light traveled as a particle, uninfluenced by gravity, and that gravitational forces were instantaneous or faster than the speed of light. In the 16th century, scientists discovered the acceleration of gravity by rolling objects down hills. But it was Newton who discovered that gravity operated under the inverse square law. The force of gravity is proportional to the square of the distance from its center to the mass. More massive, more pull. Newton thought that light particles were not affected by gravity. For centuries, Newton's theories were held to be truth. Careful measurements of a complete solar eclipse shortly after Einstein's pronouncement proved that gravity did in fact bend light. Further experiments showed that light behaved as both a wave causing interference patterns and as a particle. This is an electromagnetic force creating photons within the light bulb. The light is displayed on the wall. Now, photons travel in waves. In order to prove this, you put a piece of paper with two parallel slits in it between the light source and the wall, and you can see an interference pattern. One problem with Einstein's theory is that from an outside observer's perspective, a train, let's say, approaching the speed of light, would shrink in the direction in which it was traveling. It would get shorter. From the perspective of the train passenger, time would slow down and the distances to far places would shrink as the speed of the train approached the speed of light. One way of explaining this idea of objects becoming shorter as they approach the speed of light is that space-time fabric is actually bending. This is my spaceship. As I approach the speed of light, it appears as if it's shrinking, but in actuality, space-time is bending. The degree of curvature of space-time was developed by Lorenz. His gamma factor predicted that at 10% the speed of light, the length of the train or time passed on the train would shrink by 5 one thousandths. At 50% the speed of light, the length of time would shrink by 1 tenth. At 90% of the speed of light, the length of time would shrink by a factor of 2. At 99% the speed of light, the length of time would shrink by a factor of 7. At 99.99% .99 the speed of light, a 240 meter long train would be 1 meter long as observed by an outsider, and a 240 year trip as observed by the same outsider would only age the occupants one year. Another problem with Einstein's theory of gravity was that it could not explain the beginning of the universe and would predict the demise of the universe into a singularity or black hole were it not for centrifugal forces of the spinning universe balancing gravity's overall tendency to contract the universe. This is an example of centrifugal and gravitational forces coming in and out of equilibrium. Although Einstein and Newton could not conceive it, a new theory was needed to define gravity at the subatomic level. A major development in physics came in the 1930s when the strong and weak nuclear forces were discovered. Until then, only electromagnetic and gravitational forces were known to exist. It was found that a strong nuclear force bound protons to neutrons. The weak nuclear forces were the ones responsible for radioactivity. This was a direct product of Einstein's E equals mc squared, in that energy was mass and mass was energy. Einstein spent years searching for a theory to explain everything. In the 1970s, physicists began to look towards string theory as the universal theory, and the first theory to explain gravity at the subatomic level. When string theory was first developed, several versions were concocted, 
some requiring 26 dimensions, some 10, and now M-theory predicts 11 dimensions. Over the years, each has been shown to be a corollary of another and to share basic concepts and ideas. Just like the unification of the electromagnetic and weak nuclear forces in 1983, which share a common set of functions at very high temperatures, string theory seeks to unite gravity, strong, and electroweak forces. For decades, it had been thought that the atom was only made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. With the advancement of particle accelerators, other particles have been discovered. These were fermions and bosons. The Pauli exclusion principle states that no two particles in the same state, identical spin, color charge, angular momentum, etc., can occupy a single space simultaneously. Bosons are the 12 force carriers, eight gluons, W positive, W minus, Z, and the photon. Bosons can occupy the same state at the same time. Fermions are particles where no two can occupy the same state. There are 48 fermions, which were divided into 12 leptons and 36 quarks. There are six flavors of quarks. These are up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. There are three colors, red, green, and blue. The 12 leptons are the electron, muon, tau, E neutrino, M neutrino, and T neutrino, and there are six antiparticles. Quarks are glued together into hadrons by the strong nuclear force using gluons. So the quark and gluon charge is not electromagnetic, but rather a color charge or strong nuclear force. Expelling or admitting a gluon changes the quark's color. Under string theory, the atom could be divided even further so that each particle was made up of tiny, open and closed vibrating strings. One very important idea of string theory is that there is a particle known as the graviton. For years, it was believed that gravity was a relatively weak force compared to electromagnetism. According to string theory, gravity is actually very powerful. Since this theory brings the idea of having extra dimensions, it is now believed that the gravity that we are experiencing is only a portion of the total effect of gravity, since it spans more than one universe. Let's take Relifus the Elephus, who thinks he is the luckiest elephus in the world because wherever he goes, there is always a cabbage patch. As far as he knows, he finds an infinite number of cabbage patches. In reality, he is simply walking in a circle and passing the same cabbage patch each time. One key to string theory is the hyperbolic surface. It looks like a saddle. You can draw a straight line, mark a point not on the line, and draw many parallel lines through that point. This is in violation of Leucidian geometry. Just like Relifus the Elephus, we are not seeing the total picture. According to Einstein's theories, as we approach the speed of light, distance decreases to zero so that we could travel to the opposite side of the universe instantaneously. Do you really think that this is happening? Or maybe, just maybe, by approaching the speed of light, we are curving the entire fabric of space-time upon itself, and the distance is zero because we have bent it towards us. Under string theory, the 48 fermions are just different lengths and vibrations of open-end strings that are tied to our space-time fabric. The amplitude and frequency of their oscillations determine the flavor and color of the note or particle. Gravity is a closed string which is not tied to our space-time fabric. Gravity would be the reflection made upon our space-time by the graviton. Look cross-eyed directly at this figure so that the right portion is viewed by the left eye and the left portion by the right eye until a fusion brings about an image. Your mind's eye may be able to see the extra six dimensions that are folded inside the ten dimensions of string theory. Since there is just one type of string, about the size of the Planck length, and all particles arise from string vibrations, all particles are naturally incorporated into a single theory, or Einstein's elusive unified field theory. The Planck length is roughly the radius of a black hole, or 10 to the negative 33rd centimeters. For the extra 11th dimension of M-theory, imagine that there are parallel universes just offset from Mars. Look cross-eyed directly at this figure, 
so that the right portion is viewed by the left eye and the left portion by the right eye until a fusion brings about an image. View the right portion with your left eye and view the left portion with your right eye.